Hello and welcome to the second channel behind the scenes on how I made the uh, mono match oh, wrong way up, game, there it is, uh, from my main double video and I had a huge amount of fun putting these together. To be honest, they're barely in the main video. They're there at the very end as not an afterthought, but I don't like making a video where I don't contribute something. And so in this case, I thought, wouldn't it be hilarious to make my own ridiculously big version of a mono match um, game. Hypothetical game, not a real game. Make it very clear for licensing reasons, just a prop in a video. And obviously the details of how I made it um, are in no way needed in the main video, but given the amount of effort I put into it, I thought it might be nice to do a behind the scenes um, video. So I'm gonna very quickly gonna step you through. So the main problem was, how do I get enough icons. I needed 10,303 different pictures to put on these cards. And so I found a website where I could license literally, you know, they had millions of different possible pictures that are used as icons, like in apps and things. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. So I, I signed up for that. I got 13,000 of them because when I was doing test prints, some of them came out quite thin. So some of the um, pictures are very thin lines and I was desperately trying to avoid anything that involved a manual check like anything that requires me manually checking every single picture which is why I didn't open it up for people to submit pictures I didn't like I considered taking like the um, avatar images from people who commented on my videos but all of these ideas involved at some point a human having to check I was trying to avoid that so when we did the test um, prints. You can see ones like this aren't bad, that little that robot, that still prints fine, but some of them have much finer lines than that. So what I did was I got more icons than I needed, and they come in as just black on a uh, transparent background. When I was processing them, because you can see they're all different colors, that's important, I figured I would um, also sort them by how many or effectively how many pixels. Let me, sh I'll show you, I'll show you the code. So what I've got um, here, this is my second desktop. I'm gonna slide over um, brackets. This is my, why aren't you sliding over? Uh, why has that, not oh, I've not, <laughs> okay. I haven't plugged in the HDMI cable, which sends my laptop into my mixing desk. So as you may have noticed, I'm recording this as live, there it is. So, sorry about that, um, there it is. So I've missed, um, set that over there. Let's bring in a little, there's, oh, there's a big me. So it's like a quarter screen me. And if I pop this over there, I mean, I could have prepped this in advance, but you get the idea. Uh, so up uh, there, there's my code. This is, uh, what code is this? I think this is the, um, yeah, this is my code, my colorer. This would take all the icons, these are the colors. So I found a website that would generate color palettes for you. And I was able to find one that would optimize it for the most common forms of color blindness. So these are as distinguishable really on average across all different types of color blindness as you can get for 101. I'm using 101 different colors. And I printed 101 of these, which I thought was very funny. Um, it's a real shame I couldn't get a finite projective plane for 10,101. That just would have been perfect. 10,303, much easier to generate. I don't even know if the other one does probably doesn't exist, does it? Uh, anyway, because 101 prime number. So that was my base. Anyway, so um, where are we now? Yeah, yeah, so I um, was able to find one that would generate these colors. I was able to get them all as RGB values. And so that's what I have fed in um, here. So that's just all my, my random colors. And so it picks one at random for each icon, but then the icons are consistently that color. So this, imports every single icon, that's what's happening in this line here. It then uh, picks a random color, that's what's happening in this line here. And, uh, oh my naming, this is just me apologizing. I should say a lot of this, single use code. And that's the worst type of code, because I've not written this to ever be understood, to ever be properly debugged. No one else is ever gonna look at it. I'm probably never gonna use it again. This may be the last time I have a look at it. So it's just cobbled together to be good enough to work once and then it's gone. So anyway, it then it brings it in. This cropping, I just take off the very bottom, like the way um, I downloaded the files, there's a little bit of file information um, burnt into the bottom um, level. Just because 
I decided to not you download the full res SVG as I had to just use the preview PNG. Even though I could have used the full SVG, it was easier just to get the PNGs in and cut the bottom off because they're gonna print so small. I decided that would be a better use than hitting their pull servers to get all these SVGs and doing everything. And I have to, I have to convert it anyway at my end so I didn't bother with that. Um, this is me making sure that um, the biggest dimension is 200 pixels. So I find out which is bigger, the width or the height. I then, um, that's the restriction. And then the ratio I want to scale it by is 200 over that. And so that just means once they're rescaled, because they're all different sizes, they either get enlarged or reduced. So the biggest dimension is 200. Um, and then this, I wrote my own recoloring code, which is awful. That logs what the transparency was. This swaps out the RGB values and then dumps in the old transparency. And then, uh, and this just goes through every single pixel and swaps over the colors, awful. Uh, and then my offset here is, I, I now have an image which is at max 201 dimension, possibly both. It then puts them in the middle of a 400 by 400 square. I'll explain why I did that in a moment, but that's what it does. It pastes it in the middle and it's transparency, which is why the new one is RGBA. It's going into a transparent PNG uh, and then saves them all out. And then, um, now I've got to be able to position them on the card. So they're gonna be able to go on this card somehow. And I did a lot of that um, in Photoshop. So big fan of Photoshop, other free versions are available. I'm just gonna drag that in here, there you go. And this was me arranging, actually I'm gonna to go to a smaller mat for a second. Why did that go black? That's not good. Uh, smaller mat, where am I? There I am, okay. So I've just reduced my, my mat size and now I'm gonna, Bring that all the way over. Why did that disappear? That's not good. Is it, what have I broke? What have I broken? Huh. Gonna, uh, yeah, let's save that. Gonna give that a quick restart. I don't know if dragging it across windows broke it or if uh, I hit a weird button, but we'll um, see if we can reopen that. Okay, here we go, file. Give me a reason, give me my Pentagon layout file. There it is, okay, so now you can see what's going on. Um, so this, this, I got my friend Lisa actually printed these for me and I got her to send me the file. And so I had the actual pentagon that she's going to use when she's printing them. And then I, I, um, where are my lines? I put a uh, line, 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 there we go. Split it, um, into fifths. And I knew if I had to do 102 icons for each one, I could put two in the middle and then I put 20 in each one. And so this was me. I just manually, originally I was thinking, Actually, I was doing it with squares originally, wondering, I could, should I make them nice and tidy? Should I do them uh, random? I went with random and I went with circles. The reason I went with circles is when these are made, it um, rotates each icon an arbitrary amount before it pastes it in. Because if you look at the original um, double, they mess around with the sizes. So if we get two double cards, there's two, and um, you know it's, uh, the um, icon in common as you can see here, is very clearly the lightning bolt. Woo! Uh, they're different sizes. The two lightning bolts are different sizes. Looks like looks like I'm doing like the fake eyes thing. Um, anyway, are, are, are two different sizes. So they change the orientation and they resize. I figured resizing would be a nightmare, but I thought I could at least change the orientation. So each one's got a circle where it could go and I rotate each one. The reason I went out to 400 is in my code when I do the rotation, it um, loses any of the corners as they rotate out, just get lost. And anything that's coming in is just pure blank. So I had to make sure the thing was inside the square. Um, so what I then did was I got these disks and if you zoom right in, you can see each one has a alignment point I've put in the middle and I then used, uh, where's uh, info window? Oh, there's, uh, let me get the info windows over here. Let me bring that out. This is like the info window, tells you where the cursor is. I went through and I just literally read off. I mean, there's probably better ways of doing this. I just read off the X and Y coordinates of the center of all of these. And then once I had uh, that, let's get rid of that. I don't need those anymore. Uh, you know what, save. Um, where's my spreadsheet? Okay, here we go. Then I, uh, now it's gone. I then put them onto a spreadsheet. Here's my spreadsheet, obs. And um, there we go. See this here is where I've logged all the points. That's the center point of my canvas. I then adjust them all so the center point is now 
zero, so you're positive and negative in each direction, and then I use a matrix rotation to just move that one fifth around and around and around and around, which is why I've up here saved the cosine and the sine of 72 degrees. And then all of these, the, the formula in each of these is just doing that rotation to move it around each one. And then I, I don't round because I'm basing each one off the previous one, I'm doing 72 each time. And then I round them all separately down here. And then this is me pulling them all together and then putting them, I, I put them into brackets. This is the laziest way of doing this. I concatenated them to be in brackets so I could then just paste all those cells into a text document little bit of auto replace to then turn it into, um, here we go, where's, oh, I need to switch now to the generator, card allocator, here we go, um, to then go to the card allocator. And so this uh, would then, where are those coordinates? Uh, oh no, this is making the cards. Where's my uh, monitor? Here we go, sorry, this is the actual code which makes the cards. Card allocator is the one that generates which icons go on which card. And that's like making the structure. This is the one that actually makes the cards. And then I've just pasted them in. And then, so they're my um, 102 pasting points for each one. And then this just uh, brings in the pentagon, does all this stuff. And this is where I went wrong. Here, where am I saving? Uh, down here. Oh, your blank cards. So blank cards are the ones where I blank out the pentagon because when these were actually printed, I didn't want to print a line around the edge because they're going to get cut out. So Lisa did an amazing job getting this printed and uh, then cut out. And so we want to remove the line. And this is what I did wrong. For, I just did, if the number of the card is below the number of blank cards I need, it also exports it blank. And that just meant it did the first 101 of them, which is why they're all the happy little house. Um, what I should have done is maybe done the more, done a random number one and randomly generated a couple hundred. Like randomly picked, like I do like there's a one in a hundred chance. No, one maybe one in 50, one in 20 chance for each one that it gets blanked and put in the other one. And then I pick randomly from those 101 to print. That would have fixed my problem. I did not do that. Um, I, I just took the first N like an idiot. And so that's what went wrong. So this pasting, this um, mask, blank, 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 blank. Goodness, I'm just, it, uh, ignore all of this. Blank, blank is because up here, uh, blank, blank is the A3 pentagon cover PNG. And that's literally a white pentagon that I just paste over the black one to make it disappear. And I made sure that it's outside in where any of the icons can be. And the last thing is card allocator. This is what actually worked out which um, icons, which of these pictures go on which cards. And so, um, oh, import pickle. Pickle is just so I can, pickling is where you um, save something from Python code in a format where you can read it back in again and it just becomes what it was. And so I pickled the list, which is a list of lists and each list within that is which pictures go on that index card. And so here, so I, I generate uh, starting points and second start points is I do all the horizontal ones first. I could do in the video actually, and they're just straight across. And the other starting points, you have multiple ones each time, and then you've got the vanishing points. This is just a way of generating them all in general. So I wrote this so I could test it on the double case, and then, and not shown here, I wrote some code that would just verify it was all working. Um, and so the skips, uh, how far across it goes each time it rolls down, all that kind of stuff. Uh, offset for when it wraps around, all this kind of stuff. So this is just uh, formalizing the steps I went through um, in the video. And what I liked about this was instead of hard coding it for a specific size, um, I just wrote it to take any size. You just specify the end at the top here. However, it doesn't know if you can't have a finite projective plane. It will just give you incorrect cards if you run it. Um, on the wrong one. So um, there you are. That was the process. And it was largely for my own entertainment, given how little these were in the video. But it, you know what? It really helped me get my head around how the game works. Because when I was planning the video after Steve challenged me, and a lot of people have requested this double video. When I was planning the video, I um, knew in theory, because I'd seen Martin and other people talk about this at Mass Jam, I knew in theory what it was going to be, but only when I had to understand it well enough to plan 
the Myriad version and I had to formalize the understanding by coding it up is when I felt like I really got to grips with how the, you get the finite projective plane using that grid method. And I did not go near the cyclic deference groups. Those are a nightmare. Um, there's no easy way to get those as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong. Anyway, this has been my bonus feature. Thank you so much for watching. If you are a Patreon supporter, then um, I will send you three of these to verify. I can't make the whole thing available um, because of the license I'm using for the images. So they got a bit up. I've got a um, I've got a commercial, but not a resale license. And um, the people who own the rights to these images were pretty adamant that if I just made this generally available, they would count that as resale. And so sadly, it can only be a prop in the video, which is what I've done. And it can be verified by my Patreon supporters, which is why I'm only sending three to each person, just so they can verify them. You know what? To be safe, send them back when you're done. There you go. So anyway, thank you so much everyone who watches and supports these videos. And as always, if you come across an interesting bit of maths, number one, uh, try and investigate it yourself so you can learn about it. And number two, always, if you find something interesting or you've got an interesting question, send it in to me. And there you are. Maybe one day I'll turn it into a stupid, hypothetical, prop only, fake product. Thanks for watching. And end.